Hi, my name is Tracy Andrelot, and I'm the Joint Replacement Nurse Navigator at Middlesex Hospital's Center for Joint Replacement and Spine Surgery. We're pleased that you've chosen Middlesex Hospital for your procedure and want to ensure you that you're in good hands every step of the way. Our team works closely with you, your physician, and your family from preoperative support through surgery and postoperative care, and we're there as you make the transition to rehabilitation and home care. In my role as the Joint Replacement Nurse Navigator, I'm here to guide you and your family through the entire joint replacement process. This video will teach you key facts about joint replacement regardless of which joint is being replaced. I'll start by walking you through pre-surgical steps and then we'll cover surgery day in your recovery. Prior to surgery, you will need to do the following. Pre-operative physical by your primary care physician within 30 days of your procedure. An EKG, which is usually performed at your primary care physician's office. Appointment at our perioperative evaluation assessment center called PEAK by our advanced nurse practitioner. She will review all of your medical records and medication to determine your readiness for surgery. You will also use this opportunity to review and discuss your choices for anesthesia. Someone will call you to set up this appointment. After your peak appointment, you will have blood work, a nasal swab to rule out staph, and you'll need to give a urine sample. You can eat or drink before having these tests. Follow these instructions before your surgery to remove bacteria from your skin and prepare your skin for surgery. Shower every day for three days before your surgery and shower on the morning of your surgery. For each shower, follow these steps. Step one, shower using your normal shampoo and an antibacterial soap and then rinse off. Step two, wash with chlorhexidine, which you will be given when you have your blood work done. Avoid using chlorhexidine on your head, hair, face, and privates. Start at your neck and work your way down to your feet. Spend extra time gently washing the site of your planned surgery. Let the chlorhexidine stay on your skin for one to two minutes. Rinse your body. Have someone help you if you cannot reach any areas of your body. Do not continue using the chlorhexidine if you are allergic or develop a rash. Call your doctor if either of these happen. Do not shave your legs the day before or the morning of surgery. You could get tiny cuts on your legs where bacteria can enter. Next, let's talk about hand hygiene. Hand hygiene is the easiest, most effective way to prevent infection. Everyone who comes into your room should first clean their hands. You should also clean your hands often. If using soap and water, scrub your hands for 15 seconds and then dry with a clean paper towel. If using Purell or another brand of hand sanitizer, Rub it on all surfaces of your hands and wait until it dries up. Now we're going to discuss our pre-surgical survey call and what you should bring with you to the hospital. You will be called before your surgery by the pre-procedure office. They will want to know the following information. Medical history, current medications, including all over-the-counter prescription and herbal medications, vaccines, flu, pneumonia, including the dates received, allergies to medication, foods, environmental, any anesthesia related problems. There's a health information tracker in your education binder under the get ready section to make this easier. Use this to keep all your important information in one handy place. Try to eat from these food groups prior to surgery unless you have any allergies. There is a section in the patient manual under the get ready tab that gives sample menus, important nutrients, and a section dedicated to those with diabetes. Okay, here's what you need to bring to the hospital when you come in for your surgery. Identification, insurance card, copy of your living will, eyeglasses, hearing aid, extra batteries, dentures and denture adhesive, deodorant, magazines, books. If you have sleep apnea, please bring your mask and tubing. Most importantly, we will need to know the settings to calibrate the machine you will be using here at the hospital. So please check with the company that provided your machine and bring that information with you.
Loose-fitting clothing for discharge. You can wear the clothes home you wore to the hospital the day of surgery. Also, there are a few things not to bring to the hospital. Some of these are jewelry, cash, credit cards, or valuables. Don't bring your medication from home unless you are told specifically to do so. If asked to bring them, only bring a one-week supply. The medication needs to be in the original container from the pharmacy as well. So, we've covered a lot of ground already, but haven't even talked about the main event. On the day of surgery, you will come to the main lobby of the hospital and go to the elevators to the right of the information desk. If you're not familiar with the area, just look for the big ATM. The elevators are right there. You are going to take the elevator down to the ground floor, which is labeled G. When you get out of the elevator, look to your left and sign in at the registration area. If you bring someone with you the day of surgery, he or she will be brought back to the pre-op area after you've changed into your hospital gown and they can stay with you until the surgery team comes to bring you to the operating room. We want you to be as relaxed as possible and having someone with you can be comforting. Prior to your surgery, the operating room staff will perform a timeout safety procedure. They will verify your name, date of birth, what surgery you are having, your surgeon, and the correct leg they're doing the surgery on. Let me introduce you to some special equipment you will see in the hospital. IV catheter in your arm or hand, oxygen, dressing which is kept on for three or four days, splint or abductor pillow, Foley catheter. Prevention of pneumonia. To prevent pneumonia, we will give you an incentive spirometer in the hospital. You put the end of the tube in your mouth and breathe in slow and steady. You want the yellow part to only rise slightly. You want the white part to rise as high as possible. Please do this eight to 10 times an hour while you're awake. There are several ways we try to prevent blood clots. Those include ankle exercises, foot pumps and leg wraps, medications called anticoagulants, pain medication, PCA. Some of you will have a PCA or patient controlled analgesic. You control the amount of pain medication you receive by pressing a button. The button can be pressed every five minutes to deliver pain medication. Only you, the patient, can press the button. This medication will be stopped two days after surgery and pain pills will be started. Pain pills. Some of you will be started on pain pills directly after surgery. The important thing to remember is to use pain medication as soon as you start feeling pain after surgery to prevent the pain from getting out of control. Constipation is a complication we do not want you to have. We will work closely with you to prevent this. To help make your stay more comfortable, we can offer you the following. Earplugs, headsets, music channels, quiet time. We have volunteers that perform Reiki, massage, and reflexology free of charge. We have just for you food service, which allows you to customize your meal orders and the times you will receive your meals, ordering directly from your room. Though they may be shy to ask, people often want to know when they can resume being intimate. You'll find that information in your education binder behind the tab titled Life After Surgery. You also should know that there are some lifetime precautions you'll need to take to help protect your hip or knee after surgery. These are taking an antibiotic before and possibly after dental work, including cleanings, as well as before minor surgery or some tests. Remember to check with your doctor if you have any questions. Hi, I'm Karen, a case manager here at Middlesex Hospital, and I'm going to discuss the discharge planning process. During your stay at the hospital, you will work with a physical therapist, nursing, and a case manager to develop your optimal discharge plan. There are two options, short-term rehab at a skilled nursing facility or home with home care services for physical therapy. It is best when choosing a rehab facility to take a tour of the facility you are interested in to see if it feels like the right place for you. 
Keep the following in mind when choosing a facility. Is the facility clean? How many times a week and how many times a day will you have physical therapy? Does the facility contract with your insurance company? It is best to pre-book with the facility you have chosen as they usually will guarantee you a bed there. It is advisable to have a second choice in mind just in case your first choice facility cannot accommodate you. If you have private insurance or managed Medicare, the case manager will need to obtain authorization. It is essential when you tour a rehab facility to inquire if they have a contract with your insurance provider. If you go home with home care services, the case manager will meet with you so you can choose a home care agency that will provide your physical therapy. The case manager will also order any equipment you may need at home. Typically, a rolling walker and commode are needed and will be delivered to your hospital room on the day of discharge. If you go to a rehab facility, when you are ready to be discharged home, a case manager or social worker from that facility will order any services or equipment you may need at home. The usual length of stay at rehab is seven to 10 days. Regarding transportation, if you have Medicare or commercial insurance, both play a significant role in transportation. A total knee replacement is not covered for transportation. Your options are to have a family member transport you or pay privately for a wheelchair van. Please keep in mind, if you plan to have your family transport you, the ideal vehicles are a minivan or four-door sedan. You should not be transported in a very low car or a very high car. We recommend you sit in the front seat with the seat pushed all the way back. Transportation if you have a total hip replacement or bilateral total knee replacements is usually covered by insurance. Hi, I'm James. I am a physical therapist with Middlesex Hospital Home Care, and I'm going to talk about physical therapy at home. Realistically, you will benefit from home care services whether you go straight home or visit a transitional facility. There are multiple home care agencies to choose from. You have a list of those in your packet. If you do go home directly from the hospital, you need to have someone to stay with you for the first couple of days at least. We certainly don't want you to be home alone in the beginning. Your support person isn't there for strenuous physical assistance, but to be available to help you with meals, medications, and basic needs that may be difficult for you initially. Everyone's setting at home is unique and significantly different from the short-term rehab facility. Having a professional come into your house, even if it's only for a visit or two, helps you to get settled with equipment placement and use, safety, convenience, stairs, exercises, eating, medications, and answers to some of the many questions you're going to have. If you have stairs that you have to climb at home, the therapist will make sure that you can climb stairs safely before you leave the hospital or rehab. The home care therapist will walk you through your safety precautions, if you have any, and work on improving your stair climbing skills, which at first will be like the way you did it before your surgery. Occupational therapy is initiated in the hospital for all total hip and knee patients. Occupational therapists will instruct you on dressing and undressing, preparing meals with your surgical limitations. Benefits of going home from the hospital include you are in the comfort of your own home, treatments with a therapist are one-on-one, -on -one. you learn to climb stairs on your own stairs, cook in your own kitchen, and shower in your own shower. Physical therapy at home can last two to four weeks. If you go directly home from the hospital, visits will be as needed, then decrease depending on your progress. We use four weeks as a milestone because that's usually when you go back to see your physician, and very often at that time, they will have you make the transition to outpatient therapy. Hi, I'm Chrissy, a physical therapist here at Middlesex Hospital. So let's examine how physical therapy works in the hospital immediately following your surgery. Physical therapy teaches you how to get out of bed and walk again the day after your surgery. You need to be up and moving as soon as possible to decrease your potential risks of pneumonia, 
skin breakdown, and any other complications. Immobility after surgery can put you at risk for these complications. Most patients are allowed to put as much weight as they can tolerate on their leg. It's not going to hurt the new knee, it's not going to hurt the new hip, and they are functional and very strong right after surgery. It helps you to heal by walking on it, so your surgeon strongly encourages activity soon after surgery, carefully of course, but actively. Once you've gotten out of bed with physical therapy, the nursing staff can assist you with walking and getting up. Also, they'll help get you as comfortable as possible in ways that are most valuable to you and your recovery. Just as a side note, we don't want anyone to overdo it, especially in those first few days, or start feeling too bold and risk falling. You may want to be independent and to move on your own, but you need to rely on PT or your nursing staff in the beginning to get up and back into bed or a chair, to move around, to use the toilet and related things. Your balance is going to be off, you're going to be medicated, and accidents can happen. So please remember to not try things on your own at that point. While on the topic of positioning, if you're having a knee replacement, we want to make sure you don't put a pillow directly under your newly operated knee. You may feel that without support, your knee is uncomfortable, but it is very important that your knee straightens as much as possible. If you're having a hip replacement, we will teach you precautions to help keep you from dislocating your new hip after surgery. These precautions are maintained generally six to eight weeks after surgery, but may be longer. Your doctor will let you know when precautions are no longer needed to be maintained. Here are some exercises to perform before hospitalization. The first exercise is called an ankle pump. This exercise can be done while you are lying in bed or sitting in a chair, either with your legs elevated or with your feet on the floor. Basically, you bend your ankle up and down 10 times. Move it as much as is comfortable, but also try and feel a good stretch on the back of your calf. You can try this now right where you are sitting. It is best to do this exercise when you are in the hospital at least 10 times every hour that you are awake. This exercise will help to keep the blood moving in your legs and decrease your risk of getting a blood clot. The second exercise is called a quad set. This exercise can be done when lying down or when you are sitting in the chair with your legs elevated. Basically, you tighten the top of your thigh muscle like you are trying to straighten your leg as much as possible. You should be able to see your kneecap move. Make sure you count out loud to five. You do not need to bend your knee, just straighten it. The third exercise is called glute squeezes. This exercise can also be done while lying in bed or sitting in a chair. You squeeze your buttock muscles together as hard as you can. You can try this exercise now while you are sitting in your seat. Make sure you count out loud to five. We need to know you are breathing and not elevating your blood pressure. Relax your buttock muscles after you count to five and breathe. Repeat this exercise for 10 repetitions. The last exercise is called the chair push-up. While sitting in a chair with arms, you put your hands on the armrests and try and push your buttocks up off of the chair. Again, please make sure you are breathing. Do not hold your breath. You do not need to hold this exercise very long, just about two seconds, and then rest. This exercise will help to strengthen your arms so you can get out of bed and use a walker more efficiently after surgery. If you have any shoulder pain with this exercise, please speak to your therapist or your physician to learn a modification. So let's jump ahead again to your PT needs at or after discharge from the hospital. Physical therapy at home can last two to four weeks. The number of visits per week will be determined by the clinician assessing you. We use four weeks as a milestone because that's usually when you go back to see your physician and very often at that time, they will have you make the transition to outpatient therapy. It's important to keep in mind that you are having a big surgery and that you understand you will need time to heal. 
you will notice major improvements in the first two to three months after surgery, but that does not mean you will be returning to your favorite activities after a few months. You may need more time to get back to golf, gardening, tennis, or other more active hobbies. As I hope everyone watching this video can tell, we're very experienced. We want you to be safe and as comfortable as possible, and we want you to get back on your feet and leading a normal life before you know it. Our multidisciplinary staff will be at your side every step of the way, preparing you in advance, helping you and your family through this surgery and guiding you in the days and weeks that follow as you recover. Please familiarize yourself with the book and handouts and feel free to ask questions or talk to us anytime. That's why we're here. We're glad you chose Middlesex Hospital's Center for Joint Replacement and Spine Surgery for your procedure and look forward to working with you and your doctors as you complete this important life transition. Mm -hmm.